Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My presentation today is uveitis. Uveitis means inflammation of the uveal tissue, which is the middle coat of the eye. There are many different classifications for uveitis. The first one is anatomical classification according to the site of inflammation. It could be anterior uveitis, intermediate uveitis, posterior uveitis, or pan uveitis. Anterior uveitis refers to inflammation of the iris or ciliary body. Intermediate uveitis refers to inflammation of the pars plana of the ciliary body. Posterior uveitis means inflammation of the retina or choroid or the retinal blood vessels. Number four is panuveitis, which means inflammation of the whole uveal tissue. Clinical classification is another classification for uveitis according to the duration of the uveitis. If it is more than six weeks, it will be chronic uveitis, and if it is less than six weeks, it will be acute uveitis. The etiological classification is classified according to the etiology of the uveitis, whether exogenous or endogenous. Pathological classification is another one, and it is classified into granulomatous or non-granulomatous uveitis. Anterior uveitis is inflammation of the iris and or ciliary body. According to the etiology, it could be primary or secondary. Primary causes can be classified into infectious or non-infectious causes. The infectious causes is also classified into exogenous and endogenous, and also subclassified into bacterial and non-bacterial origin. Non-infectious causes, there are many examples. The most common examples is Bassett disease, sarcoidosis, and Voigt-Coyonagi harada. These are examples of non-infectious uveitis. The first one is Bassett's disease, which includes uveitis in association with orogenital ulcers. And the other entity is Voigt-Coyonagi harada, which is including uveitis with skin disorders like alopecia, polyosis, and vitiligo. Secondary causes means that the uveal tissue is not the primary focus of inflammation, but it is a sequelae for another inflammatory focus inside the eye, like keratitis, scleritis, subluxation or dislocation of the lens, retinal detachment, intraocular tumors, or intraocular foreign body. What are the causes of uveitis? This list includes the most common causes of uveitis, whether infectious or non-infectious. Clinical picture of uveitis. What are the symptoms of uveitis? The first one is pain, which is usually dull aching pain. Why there is a pain with uveitis? Number one, because of stretching and irritation of the nerves. Number two, due to spasm of ciliary muscle. Or number three, due to increased intraocular pressure, I mean glaucoma. The second symptom is redness, which is usually circumcorneal injection. Another symptoms for uveitis includes photophobia, lacrimation, and plephrospasm. All of them is usually due to reflex irritation of the trigeminal nerve. Decreased visual acuity. Why there is a decrease of vision? due to uveitis. It could be due to corneal complications like corneal edema or equus flarens cells, pupillary membrane, vitritis, toxic maculopathy, or cataract formation. What are the signs of uveitis? Number one, lead edema, which is usually mild lead edema. Number two, circumcorneal ciliary injection. Number three is corneal edema and keratic receptors. Number four is muddy iris. Muddy iris means that the iris becomes like the mud, with loss of iris pattern. Number five is tenderness of ciliary body. Number six is anterior chamber flare cells or hypopion in severe cases of inflammation. The pupil will become constricted with the sluggish reaction to the light. Number eight is formation of cataract or there will be iris pigments on the anterior capsule of the lens. Other signs of uveitis includes increased intraocular pressure, vitritis, and toxic maculopathy. 
What are the complications of uveitis? The complications include deep keratitis, formation of cyanicia, and it could be posterior or peripheral anterior cyanicia, and cataract formation. Other complications include cyclotic membrane, secondary glaucoma, retinitis or optic neuropathy, endophthalmitis or panophthalmitis in severe cases. Uveitis is one of the red eye syndromes, and it should be clearly differentiated from the other causes, including acute conjunctivitis, corneal ulcer or keratitis, acute congestive glaucoma. Sarcoidosis is one of the commonest causes of uveitis, and it can be presented with different manifestations. It could be anterior uveitis, whether acute or chronic, intermediate uveitis, or posterior uveitis in the form of vasculitis with candle wax dripping, choroiditis, or retinitis. Bassett syndrome is another common cause for uveitis. It is characterized by the presence of orogenital ulcers in association with uveitis. The uveitis could be presented in the form of retinitis, vasculitis, or vitrites. The right side colored fungus photo showed that white sheathing of retinal blood vessels. This is retinal vasculitis. While the left photo shows anterior uveitis with hypopion formation. What are the indications for the investigation or for the case of uveitis? Number one, recurrent cases. Number two, bilaterality. Number three, granulomatous inflammation. Number four, systemic manifestation without specific diagnosis. And lastly, confirmation of suspective ocular feature. And when not to investigate? If it is single attack of unilateral acute non-granulomatous anterior uveitis or known systemic diagnosis. The investigations include clinical tests, radiological investigations, and laboratory investigations. Tuperclean test. This is to exclude TB with intradermal injection of purified protein derivative and looking for the reaction. Pathergy test. This is to exclude Bassett syndrome and it's rarely positive in the absence of systemic activity. There will be hypersensitivity reaction to needle trauma with pustule formation. Imaging can be used to identify the disease nature or the complication of uveitis, including fluorescein angiography, ultrasound, and OCT. Radiological investigations can help us to identify the cause of uveitis. Number one is chest X-ray. This is to exclude tuberculosis and sarcoidosis. Number two, sacroiliac joint X-ray to exclude sacroiliitis associated with spondyloarthropathies. Number three, CT chest for sarcoidosis and MRI brain to exclude multiple sclerosis and primary intraocular lymphoma. Lab investigations can help in the diagnosis, which includes angiotensin converting enzyme assay to exclude sarcoidosis or ANA to exclude juvenile idiopathic arthritis and PRP or venereal disease research laboratory to exclude syphilis. HLA typing is also can help in the diagnosis of uveitis. For example, HLA B51 can be associated with Bassett syndrome, and so there are many examples for HLA associations. Treatment of uveitis. The objective of treatment is to prevent visual loss. Number two is to relieve patient discomfort. Number three, to treat the underlying cause. There are many drugs can be used in the treatment of uveitis, including medriatics, steroids, cyclosporin, and cytotoxic drugs. 
Mediatic cycloplegic eye drops can be used to relieve patient discomfort, to prevent formation of posterior synechia, or to break down the preformed posterior synechia. This can be done with atropine or atropine derivatives. Steroids is the main treatment for uveitis, and it could be used in topical form, periocular form, or systemic form. The topical administration can result in different complications in the eye, including cataract or glaucoma formation. Periocular steroids. This is usually used for severe acute anterior uveitis or posterior uveitis. Systemic steroids. This is usually preserved for the severe cases of intermediate uveitis, posterior uveitis, or panuveitis. We can start with prednisolone acetate, and the initial dose will be 1 to 1.5 mg per kg in body weight, with maximum 60 mg per day. Then we will start with full dose, then we will taper it gradually. Cyclosporin is a steroid sparing drug. With hypertension and nephrotoxicity are the commonest complications for this drug. Cytotoxic drugs is usually preserved for severe cases of uveitis as an adjuvant or steroid sparing treatment. Systemic antibiotics and antihelmintics can be used for treatment of infectious causes of uveitis.